Hi, welcome to Mobile World Congress. I want to introduce you to Flutter, Google's toolkit for building native apps on iOS and Android from a single code base. And in fact, since MWC last year, we've seen global brands from all around the world using Flutter to build their apps. These challenges all still exist because the current options out there all involve compromise. In fact, there are two main ways to build apps today, each which pose a different set of compromises on these four priorities. We call it the dilemma of mobile app development. Flutter is a third approach, one that falls for neither of these sets of compromises. It's fully native. Everything written in Flutter compiles directly to native machine code, meaning what you get on your phone is exactly what was written. There's no context switch. But it's also a single code base. So you get that straight path to the castle. But today, I'm really excited to officially announce the release of Flutter 1.2. You can go to flutter.dev and download it directly, or if you already have Flutter, simply update. We are launching a brand new YouTube channel dedicated only to Flutter. So on there, you can find videos from you know, technical videos for your developers to really understand Flutter, to case study videos like the one we just saw, to a lot of other things that are helpful when you're building or going through Flutter. Secondly, we just launched Flutter Create, which is a competition for developers to build an app in Flutter in less than five kilobytes of dark code. And we have some really cool prizes, but it's also a fun way to get quickly involved in the Flutter community and onboarded with the platform. And that runs until April, so you should go check that out. So all the apps you saw up there use Flutter, but in different ways. Now, there are three common ways people are using Flutter today. The first is to build a brand new app from scratch using Flutter. So if you have an idea or an app that you want for your business, now would be the perfect time, because you develop it in one place, ships natively on all platforms. The second way is to actually build Flutter for the other OS. What we mean by that is if you already have an iOS or an Android application and you want to build the other one to reach more users, you can build that other one with Flutter and get it out quickly and eventually merge the code bases. And thirdly, add Flutter to your existing app. I'm sure many of you and your businesses already have applications. The good news is you can use Flutter for that. In fact, that's what Alibaba did in the video you saw earlier. They incorporated Flutter to rebrand uh, some of their pages, but they didn't lose the 50 million installs they had. It was simply an update. Instead of me telling you about all these use cases, I thought it would be great to show you a first-hand example and bring up partners as well to talk about how they've incorporated Flutter in these different ways. Hi, everyone. I'm Dom. I'm head of Digital Fab Road Studios, presumably the most famous and definitely the oldest studio, recording studio in the world. And today, I'd like to talk to you how our 87 years of innovation brought us here on the stage and to build our very first mobile app created with Flutter. So we decided to create a top line, the very first songwriting app for, uh, from Abbey Road Studios. This app allows you to import an instrumental track, sing your vocals on top of it, jot lyrics, uh, share very easily with a producer or whoever else you're working with, and save it all in the cloud. We are really inspired by the studio experience, and this is what we try to kind of reflect within the studios, uh, within the, this mobile app. So uh, most of the musicians out there, they know what, what it means when the red, uh, red light shines. You, it means you're on, on air, you're supposed to start, so we reflected that in the app. We reflected the shapes, the shapes of the buttons, the, the faders as well, the shapes of the little knobs there. Those are things which are usually known to musicians, and they know what to do with it. And all of that was only possible with a high customization of the natively available elements. So we had to use customizable widgets from Flutter, and that really made that beautiful UI shining through. We were able to actually build the Android app in record 10 weeks. 10 weeks, guys. And this is with just three developers, two front end, and one Android developer. It was not only used by musicians around the world and in the studios, but also it, it was picked up by the media, by Forbes, Music Radar, Music Ally, Sky News, Pocket Link, Metro, what have you. Lots of lots of titles got really interested and were really complimentary about our app. Last year, we won really, two really, really prestigious awards. Best Music UK App of the Year and Best UX of the Year. Hi, everyone. Um, Varun Minghani and I lead the merchant product management team at Groupon. So our journey with Flutter started almost a year ago, where we were tasked with building functionality for merchants on Groupon's new program called Groupon Plus. At that time, we evaluated multiple options. Should we build a brand new app for the new program? 
Um, should we extend our native functionality for this new program? Should we take a cross-platform approach uh, to build once and deploy it twice? And that's the time we came across Flutter. Uh, when we looked at it, we were very excited uh, you know, by its capabilities of uh, being able to build cross-device uh, and also to speed up application development. However, we also wanted to make sure that whatever we build integrates well into our existing functionality, and it is uh, stable, and it's also performance. So there's no performance degradation when, per when merchants use the app for business. We ran a POC, and we were pleasantly surprised by the results. And that's the point at which we built all the screens and the functionality of our new Groupon Plus uh, uh, program uh, for merchants using Flutter and integrated that with the existing screens. Uh, we were happy with the overall implementation of the project, and with success of that, we also continued to use Flutter uh, in other new features that we built, uh, a prime example being when we revamped the app support for all our merchants, not only the Groupon Plus ones, but also the regular ones. So as Martin said, uh, my name's Carl. I'm the lead for Square's developer platform. I'm thrilled to be here today to talk about our partnership with Flutter. To date, actually, we found out about Flutter and got engaged really early in the beta. And we've been incredibly excited and amazed at the passion and engagement that we see in the developer uh, Flutter community on a daily basis. Since launch, what we've seen with Flutter is incredible adoption. In fact, over 30% of active developers building applications using our in-app payments SDK are Flutter developers. Every one of those is building an application for Flutter. And on the left here, what you see, this is the actual product experience that you will get inside of your application on Flutter. And this is in about five lines of code. This guided experience is provided to every single developer, and then they're able to customize many different aspects of this as they see and need to in their application. As you can see, it's easy to build applications that take payments using Flutter. We're incredibly excited to continue to work with Google and see what people build with our SDKs. Thanks, Martin. And uh, hello, everybody. At Nevercode, we believe that uh, businesses should be able to test and deliver mobile apps seamlessly throughout the development uh, process. You should be able to focus on making a great product and have the testing and delivery process automated. Before CodeMagic, we've been building our automated testing and delivery product with mobile developers in companies like uh, Toyota, Sainsbury's, and Walmart. And we made a dedicated service specifically designed for Flutter. That service is CodeMagic. And we automate all the manual work to get your app to the users. CodeMagic is a free service. And businesses can use it to test and deliver their app seamlessly. And developers can focus on building a great product and making users happy. My name is Chris, and I am the product manager for the Flutter developer experience. Of course, any architecture we want, we want it to be layered. We don't want it to be intermixed. We want it to be easy. If there's anything that we want to do to extend Flutter, either on top by building our apps, or in, in the middle by forking it, or adding functionality in between, that you can do that. Okay, so at the bottom of the architecture is the engine, and this is built in C++ code. It's meant to be the fastest possible thing it can be. So it's built um, low, at the low level to do drawing and low level rendering, and we also have the Dart runtime and jitter at that bottom level. Okay? Now on top of that, everything else is built with Dart. When it comes to features of a modern UI framework, First and foremost, we want something to be declarative. This is something that we have from the web. Traditionally, before the web, when we wanted to, say, lay out something like what we have on the right there, we'd say, OK, we have an a image, and it starts in the upper left, and it has a certain amount of width, and it has a certain height. And then the thing that comes under it, we offset it. And we lay out that, and we calculate all those numbers, and we lay it out ourselves. That's not how I want to spend my day. Now, that platform channel idea has led to a whole ecosystem of plugins. Because a, the idea of a plugin is Dart code plus platform specific code for one or more platforms. Okay? A package, a regular old Dart package, is just Dart code. 
right? But a plugin is uh, a Flutter piece of Flutter code that can target the native platform using those platform channels. And so if you want to write that native code, you can. But if you don't want to, you can just go to that URL right there and type in a search word and see if one of the 1,400 components that's already there serves your needs. And the Flutter team has put a bunch up there, and other members of Google have put a bunch there, and there's some great ones from the Flutter community, and Square has built one. I mentioned a couple of times Flutter 1.2, which comes with uh, a, a number of framework features, including animation easing functions and Android app bundle support. And as I mentioned, those are from third parties. Right? Those don't come from the Flutter team. Okay, two big features. So I'm going to see if I can, in the next 19 and a half minutes or less, put together a phone dialer. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to create my first widget. So I'm going to go and I'm going to create a stateless widget. And I'm going to call it my dialer, because I'm going to be building a dialer. I'm going to take my digit button, and I'm going to replicate it. And I'm going to put in a two. And now I have two buttons. Great. And let's have a look. This is a whole bunch of things. I can do borders, and I can do box shapes and shadows. Um, but I'm going to play with a gradient. So let's stick in a gradient. And I'm going to give this a linear gradient. And this is going to require a couple of colors. And I'm going to stick with that dark blue that we had earlier. And I'm then going to make a uh, hideous design choice and blend it into green, because why not? And there we go. OK, so now we've got a color. And this is a American phone with a UK SIM sitting in Spain, so it takes a few seconds to go through. Did I get your number right? Hello, Mobile World Congress. There we go. I think that's working. Excellent. And there we go. So there you go. So that was a dialer in Flutter, mostly written from scratch with a few bits and pieces in 16 minutes and 52 seconds. Thank you very much, Matt. Right now, good design is expensive. It's true. Especially on mobile. It takes extra engineering resources to execute, and what you want is rarely what you get. The designer hands us something detailed and beautiful, but we push back on what makes it special. But what gets me excited about Flutter is that we can break that cycle. We can ship the app we really want with detail and polish and fewer of those painful compromises. Flutter's architecture is designed for building beautiful custom UI. Flutter's main goal is to make building polished custom app experiences easier for developers and designers. Hello, everyone. My name is Jacob. I am a co-founder at Reflectly, where I do UX UI design, but I also do front-end development. Now, I'm here today to tell you a bit about Reflectly, um, but also to tell you how Flutter actually enables us to push our product visions into the hands of millions of end users all around the world. Now, Reflectly is what we call a conversation-based journal. What this means is that everyday users open up the app and go through a series of questions. However, instead of just giving them a blank page and they have to fill it in with text, we actually prompt them with very specific UI interactions. So they might rate their day with a little smiley face slider, or they'll select an icon that best represented how their day actually went. Now, we're zooming back to the start of 2018, um, where we've built Reflectly in a completely different multi-platform framework. And if you're an eagle-eyed audience member, you'll see that there are some, let's call them minor discrepancies between the two views. And we were unfortunately seeing this time and time again. We would push some new features, and the, the consistency simply wouldn't be there. We would see that they were lacking, for example, here, half the screen is missing. Um, so we were really, really frustrated with this. So we started looking at the market again, and we found Flutter. And it was extremely promising. However, we had to make an, a very conscious business decision do we invest the time in actually building out in this new framework? Or do we go native and actually build two code bases? Well, we took a leap of faith. And from the first line of Flutter code was written in March 2018, with the learning curve of Dart and building out all these new features underway, we were done in just two and a half months, which was incredible, because we were rebuilding our entire front end and our back end, just two engineers. Instead of passively watching the construction, designers could be a part of it. 
carving out a role after the dev has begun as the arbiters of fine detail, supporting their engineers and eliminating unnecessary feedback, tickets, and effort. Flutter, I believe, is the platform where that can finally really happen. Designers can really learn to support engineers by sharing the code base, to quickly pick up the skills necessary to feel useful and connected to the development. Flutter.dev is your go-to link for everything. We hope you go and try Flutter and give our team feedback. And I hope you enjoy the rest of our talks here at Mobile World Congress. Muchas gracias.